How amazing would it be for our profession to have like a Navy SEAL strike force that existed that anywhere in the world that chiropractic is under attack, we could immediately deploy our team to defend its rights. Welcome to AMC, I'm Dr. Greg Miller. Did you know that chiropractic is under attack by all kinds of groups around the world? Today, Dr. Tara Horrell is joined by Baron Hoig, Executive Director of the Chiropractic Defense Council, to discuss the important work of the CDC on your behalf. His story of personal growth is especially motivating. If this video helps you, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. Hello, uh, we're here today with uh, Baron, and he's uh, joined us at an AMC boot camp here in Atlanta. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, by the way. my pleasure. Um, he's uh, had an opportunity to share with our membership, and we thought that you might enjoy uh, hearing what he's out there fighting the good fight for you as well with his company, CDC mm -hmm. uh, Organization. I yeah, the, the good CDC, the, yeah. The yeah, organization, yeah, yeah. CDC, <laughs> and not the one you're thinking of. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell us what what you do, Baron, with CDC and, yeah. and how that really um, wraps into chiropractic and, and and all. Yeah, absolutely. So our core organization is One Chiropractic, which is a 501c6 nonprofit. Um, in one I don't chiropractic. Know what any of that means, uh, that's all right. Well, it just it just means I don't got to give the government money as oh, long as okay, I great. put the money back into the cause, right? That's that's it's profitable like any other business. Okay, I just great. don't give Uncle Sam anything. So, um, but nonetheless, it, it 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 really the importance of a nonprofit is the governing body. Like I can't I can't pay myself all the money. I can't take that money and go on trips and you know it's illegal. So it's an accountability measure really. So it lets those that can contribute that that I have a standard that I have to uphold all my financials are public they can go online and, and look for 990s and see exactly what we do so just it, it means if you're not going to pay the government you got to be transparent about what you're doing Checks so correct well. correct awesome. so so one chiropractic is the core organization in that we have projects that we launch so we have a military project trying to get chiropractors as uh, um, commissioned officers in the military we have um, our Chiropractic Defense Council, which is the CDC, mm -hmm. is a project within One Chiropractic. And um, the CDC started in February of last year with this vision of how amazing would it be for our profession to have like a Navy SEAL strike force that existed that anywhere in the world that chiropractic is under attack, we could immediately deploy our team to defend its rights. Mm -hmm. Right now, historically, I'll use Canada for example because that was one of the stimulants that, that came to building this. Um, at the middle of last year, all of a the sudden, their chiropractic college, which is the equivalent of a licensing board, came out and said in British Columbia, said that you can no longer do routine x-rays. That the only way you can do an x-ray is if you, have, if you have a significant finding that would necessitate them, which means all of your activator doctors, your CBP doctors, all those doctors that use x-rays as part of their listings to be able to know how to move could no longer do it. Significant to them. Correct. Significant <laughs> to them, right, but not according to the right, new exactly. policy. Right. So that you have a lot of chiropractors are like, wait a minute. And not only is that bad, it's like if they continue to do it, they could lose their license. And so well, it we... It starts with x-ray. Yeah. Oh, it exactly. Next, right? It's going to it's going to trickle. And so but it took them six months to raise money, interview attorneys before they could respond. Yeah. In that six month, they missed an opportunity for an injunction. They missed other opportunities to stop this from happening. And that's typically what happens in chiropractic. So our vision was amazing. If, if the CDC was available in, in existence, then we could have responded the next day. Right. Like with our attorneys with a cease and desist, we could have forced a hearing. We could have done different things. Um, and there are amazing chiropractors fighting up there. But you guys are full-time chiropractors. Right. So you, like for you to take this on, and you do, which is amazing to me, but it's not efficient. Right. And it's oftentimes becomes very limited in our ability to respond because you're trying to do it without destroying your practice in the middle of a fight. And we just, I want to do things differently, right? You know, we've got to create a new model of how our profession operates. And so we created this for that reason. And now, you know, we didn't know at the time in February, there were no mandates, there were no vaccines at that time. We knew things were coming. But God, as God's timing is always perfect, we literally built everything just in time. We launched in July and in August, the first mandate happened in California. Oh, wow. So we were able to immediately get our attorneys. We now have over 37 attorneys on retainer worldwide. We're in seven countries. 
Um, we're defending chiropractors all over um, and protecting their rights, everything from x-rays to the ability to treat children to mandates to students in chiropractic school that have been in some form biased to be able to complete their program. Mm -hmm. So we protect the rights of practicing chiropractors. That's, that's our job all over the world. And we've been blessed. We're funded completely by donors. We don't have wow. anything to sell. We have no service that we provide that's for, for money. Um, and so we're, we're just over 3,000 contributors giving us 30 three dollars a month and so it's really created a different kind of a model that helps us to be able to support what we do well wow. and and like you said that's a different model than yeah what uh, what a lot of the other groups use now why did you do 33 yeah so the whole idea my my vision when we created one chiropractic back in 16 because our funding model has been the same since we created even right. before the CDC mm -hmm. um, was that I wanted to find a way to bring the profession together, which we don't do very well. Right. Um, you know, most people don't know the statistic, but we have arguably in the United States anywhere from 60 to 75,000 licensed yeah. chiropractors. Mm -hmm. We have less than 10% of those belong to either right. national organization. Mm -hmm. That's really sad. Like how, it's no wonder we don't get any legislation passed. It's no wonder we're not able to fight some of the issues. We're so segmented. So I wanted to find a way to bring people together, but not make them choose us over someone else. Right. And I also wanted to find a way that made them remember why they were giving. A lot of us, you know, we're on auto renew for our state associations right. or our coaching things, and we don't remember it, we don't see it, it's just part of everything that we do. And so as I was developing this, I'm like, okay, I, I wanna do $33 after the 33 principles. I wanted you to see that number mm -hmm. and remember that this was something bigger than I'm just giving to a school or I'm just giving, it's reminding me about the core reasons why we exist. Um, and I wanted it to be low enough that even when things get tight, I wasn't the thing you cut. Right. It, it, 33 is not going to really help you make your mortgage payment. It's not going to help you do these things. So it helps with our retention on people continuing to give. And since 2016, we're at 87% retention of contributors. Wow. And so the model has worked. But what it's done is it's expanded our ability for everybody to be a part of this, even students, even staff members. We have CAs giving. We wow, have patients great. giving. We have, you know, it's been an awesome opportunity to open this up to the world. And then the value they get out of that and the states where or in parts of the country where there are issues, we, our legal team will defend them at no additional charge. Wow. But every Monday they get a video being told exactly what's going on in your specific country. Um, any resources we develop, like in the United States, immediately when that stuff came out, we hired an attorney to build religious exemption forms. Mm -hmm. We immediately sent them out, showed them how to fill them out, showed them what to do, and then if anyone challenged them, our legal team will defend them. So we were able to keep all of our people um, practicing in the United States, wow. even with mandates. That's and amazing. so it's been, a, it's been a phenomenal model, but I, I wanna show the profession. Now we raise, and I'm not ashamed of this, our, our, our numbers are available. You can go to our website and see we're very transparent. But I mean, we're now raising about $110,000 a month. And, and that gives me the ability to sustain the lawsuits that we have in Australia, right. the lawsuit we have in Rhode Island. Well, that's um, something the, I wanted you to address at some yeah. point is, what are outside of the the religious exemptions the things mm -hmm. that are going on with covid what are some of the other issues that you guys are actively yeah if you can talk oh about absolutely yeah, yeah yeah i mean i can't actively, give you a total strategy sure, but i can obviously. tell you what the issues are mm -hmm. um yeah so in canada right now specifically british columbia we have a chiropractic college which again is the equivalent of a licensing board that's out of control they've been very militant very draconian in their own efforts even outside of mandates Things like the x-ray that we already talked about right. earlier. Um, they've targeted chiropractors and just went after them and they've been largely held unaccountable. So we're creating a new you know, infrastructure there in British Columbia. We're rallying people together. We have a very good attorney that we're working with that's gonna try to shape that process back up. We're, we're doing some political type stuff, getting the right people where they need to be and then fixing those issues that have been there for a long time. Um, in Australia, um, obviously the pediatric issue right. that has been resolved, but we worked with that. But we also have an issue in Australia, their licensing body is called OPERA and it covers everything. Like there is no chiropractic board, oh, medical board. It's one which if you can imagine makes it very, very ill-equipped to deal with issues because like it, Illinois. yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. It's not really capable of understanding right. the nuances. So we're taking that on as an organization to help restructure for Australia so we don't run into the issues we're running into right now mm -hmm. in this particular mandate. In England, we're dealing with uh, x-ray issues as well. Um, we're introducing chiropractic in a couple 
couple different areas of the world that they've reached out to us saying, we're trying to get started, we don't know what to do. Um, South Africa, we just started working with them. They have some other issues that are outside of all of that that's unique just to South Africa, but it has to do with the chiropractor's ability to treat and their scope and how they practice. So we'll take on, you know, our, our clause is this. We exist to defend the rights of practicing chiropractors around the world. What we don't do is I'm not, I'm not going to defend you if you're in an inappropriate relationship with a patient. Right. I'm not going to defend you if you, have, if you hurt someone. You have malpractice for that kind of stuff. Exactly. So I'm not your individual legal team. But anything that affects the global thing of chiropractic, we will take on. Wow. You started this, the CDC uh, after the other company that you started, the yeah, One Chiropractic. Yeah, One Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. How did you, because you're not a chiropractor, right? right? right. How did you even get into um, defending chiropractic and really um, having better philosophy than um, a lot of folks that I know and better conviction than a lot yeah. of chiropractors? I think it's, you know, again, part of it is just the people I surrounded myself with, right? You talk to any successful business person and they'll tell you, you have to surround yourself with people that are better than you so that you strive to be like them. Ooh, great it's, principle. Right? Yeah, I mean, it just <laughs> is. I mean, it's very, it's comfortable to surround yourself where you're the king of the castle because you feel good, right. everyone's, but you don't grow in that, mm -hmm. like, and so uh, in my journey of chiropractic, I, I really made sure that I was around the people that I felt like had their pulse on what was going on. And for the early part of my journey, I was around people that now I look back and like, I'm so glad I didn't follow their mm -hmm. image. But at the time, it was flashy, it was shiny, that was yeah. what success looked like. And so it's really God. I, and, and it's the power of the adjustment that's driven me through the path that I've driven. Again, I lived in the world of insurance reimbursement and coding and compliance, and right. I made a name for myself in that. But as I got further away, I also saw how that robbed the joy out of every chiropractor that I met. They love treating patients, but they couldn't stand their notes. They couldn't yeah. stand the insurance regulations okay. changing. They mm -hmm. couldn't stand the threat of someday being audited. Right. And so as I've evolved in my understanding and consciousness, you know, I have a clinic now too in Columbus, Ohio. I, in Ohio, you don't have to be a chiropractor to own. So I have a clinic and okay. we'll be opening more. And we're a cash clinic because mm -hmm. I don't, I, I literally opened it to remove everything that robbed joy from my team. Mm -hmm. And I put everything in that I knew instilled enthusiasm, excitement in our team. And we opened up in the middle of a pandemic and we're doing amazing. And uh, our team is incredible. We love it. Our patients love it. We're causing generational change in families, which is our mission statement. And uh, and it's it's been incredible. So I, I've just just watch the journey overall mm -hmm. and and I've so I've I've went where I found fulfillment and where I'm filled with the purpose rather than the things pulling it from me awesome well, like I said we sure appreciate you yeah. coming and sharing with us today um, folks <laughs> If you didn't get anything from that, I, I learned a lot from that just now. If you couldn't pull some pearls out of that, then I'm, yeah. I may wonder if you have a pulse. Uh, but like I said, we sure appreciate all, all you're doing to fight the good fight for chiropractic. And you know, if you enjoyed what you heard today from Barron, feel free to uh, touch base with us and, uh, and come and meet us at a boot camp uh, and see what AMC is all about and hear from some of these other folks that are, uh, are out there doing the work for us. And I'll jump in on that too because those that you know me know I can be bought. I, I don't solicit. I'm and I'm a straight shooter. But I have really enjoyed being here. This is my first time. I've heard and known about you guys for a long time. I've had doctors that have told me about you guys. But to sit in that room this morning and to watch those awards being given and to feel that energy and the support. I think I even said from the stage that yeah. it felt like coming home for Christmas. It was That's such awesome. an unbelievable family feeling. And and I know a lot of you, you feel like you're on an island, you feel alone. And whether you're a part of AMC or another group, it is so important to surround yourself with people that help you be the best version of yourself. And Absolutely. if you're not doing that, if you feel alone, whether you're successful or not, and whatever, however you define that, find a home. If you don't have one, I, I do highly recommend these guys. You're already here. You're watching this particular clip. So um, I, I encourage you to come to an event and feel that energy of a family. It really is like coming home here. It's a pretty special place. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been here for over 15 years. Um, there's a reason mm -hmm. why, uh, why I stick around um, and why I've hitched my wagon to, as yeah, you say, yeah, right, to yeah. AMC and really uh, gotten on mission with them as well. So we really appreciate That's that. Great. My pleasure. We appreciate you coming and being part of our family this weekend. Yeah. Uh, once a family member, always a family Absolutely. member. So, you know, Absolutely. So we look forward to you coming back sometime and, yeah. and joining us again. And like I said, if you all haven't uh, joined us at a boot camp, feel free to touch base, um, hop on our website, 
uh, where it says events. Click that and you'll be able to register for one of our next upcoming boot camps. Thanks for joining us. Thanks guys. Join us at our next training weekend, July 21st to the 23rd. If you're new to AMC and would like a free guest pass to three days of material like this, text us at 904-966-4996. AMC is your guide to becoming respected, effective, and valued in practice.